Hello, dear writer. Today I thought I would take you through my Notion writing corner. It's the virtual place I go to whenever I sit down to write or simply to organize my projects. Take a seat. Grab a drink. And let me know what your favorite section is. The writing corner is like the common room where every writing project gathers and it's decided which will be prioritized. The first section is divided into three columns. In the first column are the links to the projects I'm currently working on. In the second, at the center of the stage, is my author statement. In the third are the authors that I consider to be my godparents when it comes to writing. Your current projects are easily accessible because you'll open their trackers on a regular basis. Your author statement is the idea you have for your work in the world. Who do you write for? How are your stories best read? What do you bring to the genre you write in? When I'm feeling lost in my writing journey, coming back here to read this always helps. As does the list of author godparents. Then we move to the second section of the writing corner, which is the timeline. Your writing timeline can go as far as you want to and include as many projects as you'd like. But for me, I like to use it for my long-form projects only, novels and novellas and only the ones I'm currently working on or ones I'll be starting soon. As I mentioned in my writing reset video, I'm giving each draft of Project Snow three months, but within each month are two sections, one for revising and one for drafting. I'll go deeper into this when we open the project page but for now, let's move on to the writing schedule, which is a database that I created solely with the purpose of connecting it to my to-do list in my Notions homepage. I'm not going too much into it because this connection is connected to the way I organize my life in Notion, and that's another video altogether. But basically, in my writing schedule, I plan exactly on which day I'll be working on each part of my story. I usually update this every week when it's time to plan for the week ahead. If you think this database could serve you, feel free to keep it, but it's not necessary to the writing tracker. Arriving at the last section of the writing corner, we have a list of future projects, divided into categories. Adult novels, novellas, middle grade novels, and short stories. Each of these pages is dedicated to each particular project. Whenever I'm having a hard time deciding which project to work on next, I fill this out, how to choose your next project. I explain how to do it in this video. And last but not least, we have the shelved projects. These are projects I have no intention of going back to anytime soon, but there's still a chance I'll pick them up someday. Alright, so that's the writing corner, the common room. Now let's go back here and see what each project page is made of. In here I have a novel and a short story. I'll show you both because they differ a little bit. Okay, so project novel. Again, we divide it into three sections. The first one includes basic information about the project in the Agents page, I'm collecting the agents that I think would be interested in this project. And in the Query Letter, I still don't have much because it's not something I'm working on at the moment, but I think I'll add to it things like a blurb, a synopsis, all of those things that might be needed when I'm querying agents in the future. And we have a toggle here where I collect ideas for my ideal book cover because it makes me excited even though I won't be the one creating it. 
then we have information about the novel, statistics, and finally, a Pomodoro timer, which is a recent edition. Then we have the most used section of this page, which is the writing tracker. This section is inside the toggle because it gets quite extensive and if I want to access the section underneath it, I just need to do this. So the writing tracker is a database that helps me track my progress and get to know my writing process better so that in the future I can be more effective with my time and energy. So in this first section we have the writing session. This is where I track how many days I spent writing and also how many sessions I did per day. So for example, on day one, I had three writing sessions. One of them was 25 minutes and the other two were 50 minutes. So the time here is in minutes. Then I also have the total word count, but I only track it when I'm drafting. And this is a formula which tells me how many words per hour I wrote on that particular writing session, so my writing speed. Next, we have the stage, which is the writing stage I'm on. So here I was brainstorming, later I started outlining, but I was still brainstorming. Then just outlining, back to brainstorming, etc. Then we have the date, this is useful if I want to see how much I wrote on a particular month, for example. Then the act, this is the story structure, so which act was I working on. So at first when I was brainstorming, I didn't know which act each idea was for, but once I started outlining, I started working on specific parts, so in this case Act 1. But we also have Act 2A, Act 2B, Act 3. You can change these to fit whatever structure you follow. And finally, I have the feeling. This is how I felt throughout that writing session or by the end of it. So we have struggled, loved it, it was okay. Then if we open the writing session, I have three questions, actually, this one only has two, let me find one with three. Okay, so this is the current version. So we have three questions. What was this writing session all about? And this is a toggle, so you can open it and write. How did it go? And what's next? So yeah, that's the writing tracker. Then we have the goals section, which is also a toggle and lets me see at a quick glance the timeline for this particular project. So these are the sections I keep in every single projects page. Then within each project I add particular sections which I feel like the project needs. For example, for project snow, I'm creating a table to track every character arc. I'll leave this table in the template in case any of you find it useful. Now, project short story. The first section is basically the same I use for novels, only without the agents and query page. I like to change the Pomodoro Kitty's color to match the project I'm working on. It's useless, but it makes me happy. The writing tracker is also the same, but then the last section is what's different because I found that I prefer to brainstorm and outline short stories in Notion rather than in Scrivener because Notion is so visual and short stories are not complex projects. So I created a table to outline each short story based off a 7 plot point structure. I'm still not sure this structure will work for every short story I write. But so far, I've outlined two stories and it's worked really well. And there you go! That's how I organize my writing in Notion. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, don't forget to leave me a like and a comment, it really helps my channel. And share this with a friend who might need it. Alright, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!